We're going to start this puppy up. Clear? Prop? And welcome back. Tip of the week. Here at AirVenture 2019, Oshkosh, Wisconsin. In this next segment, there is a new option available for a very popular home-built aircraft, the RV-12, that provides an engine that is half the price of the one suggested by the factory and yet provides more performance. Listen to this next gentleman. Hi, my name is Dick Gossin. I'm uh, owner of uh, AeroSales-EAB, which is a company that is associated with AeroMomentum engines, and we are the exclusive U.S. dealer for the AM13 and AM15 engines in the RV12 platform. Now, the reason for that is that I have been working uh, for the last year developing a complete firewall forward package with working with AeroMomentum to put their engines along with every other component needed, literally everything needed, to bolt the entire system onto an unfinished RV-12 without modifying the RV-12 structure in any way. And that took some doing. Um, so let me give you a little tour of the major systems and components in the engine and basically some of the challenges that we had. Uh, and then I'll talk to you about the uh, rather spectacular performance that I'm enjoying now. And then, then we'll wrap it up generally. So first, uh, this is the AM15. Uh, it's a 1.5 liter, four-cylinder inline, all FADEC controlled, uh, nice modern automotive style engine. Um, an important note is that Unlike some alternative engine suppliers, uh, this engine is not only all new, um, but in fact, we, uh, we start with a bare block from the foundry that builds blocks for Suzuki. And we take that bare block and basically blueprint a racing engine. That, that's how this is built, from the bottom end up. Every part in this engine is either a Suzuki part, like most of the bottom end, crankshaft and all that stuff. That's all the, the rugged, heavy-duty Suzuki stuff that this engine is known for. Um, and the top end contains a number of items that come from the racing and off-road and aftermarket community. For example, uh, the camshaft. There are variations in camshaft lift and duration and so forth that can modify the torque curve or the horsepower. Uh, and we make use of that. For example, there are two models of this engine, the AM15. It's the straight model, which is at 117 horsepower. And you can buy that for about 10 grand. I, I think it is 99.95. Or there's an HP version, which is what this is. And it contains uh, a, a better flow head, uh, different pistons, um, and principally the most important thing is a high lift, broad profile camshaft. That makes a very strong, very broad torque curve over the entire usable RPM range. And at 6800 RPM, this engine will produce 147 horsepower on the dyno. And yes, we do dyno and custom tune every engine. So there's data, hard data, behind these numbers that I'm telling you. It's also rare. Um, so, typically, <clears throat> if you're not going to pull a sea ray out of the water or something like that, you probably don't want to run at 6,800 RPM on takeoff. But you can adjust that with the prop. This is a three-blade Luga prop. It's all composite. Actually, it's all carbon. Uh, we sell this. It's part of the firewall forward package, as is the spinner. If you look at this prop, you can see 
I've got quite a bit of pitch in this thing right now and I did that in order to get a good trade-off between takeoff and cruise performance. So I limit my takeoff performance a bit. That is, I can only climb this airplane out at 1500 feet per minute sustained. That is real, <laughs> that's true, and I can show you uh, data log data to support that. I can do that all the way to 1500 feet with me and, and full gas and about 50 pounds of luggage, almost gross. Um, so th that's an example of the kind of torque and power that I get out of this engine. Um, in the cruise, with the same prop setting, I push the nose over and pull back to 65% power and the airplane cruises at 145 miles an hour true all day long at five and a half gallons an hour. And I, I just flew it up from Texas, 145 all day. I just sat there, locked up the autopilot and grinned and I had a great time. It just it made a real cross-country machine out of the RV-12. I gotta tell you, it's a lot of fun. Okay, so some of the challenges. Um, when you build up a race engine like this and use it in an application where you're gonna run at 65, 75% power all the time, you have to, the one thing you gotta deal with is cooling. That's always the issue. So in this case, we ended up with a nice quad-core little radiator up front the cowling open is right there. Um, you can see the cowling on the ground right over here. Notice that I split it in halves, which makes it very easy to install when you have a three-blade propeller. But you don't have to do that. Anyway, between the radiator and the oil cooler, which is necessary with the HP engine, that oil cooler is right here. It's four inches wide, 13 inches long and it's attached to the oil sump. So the air vent goes in there, the air comes out the bottom and goes right out the bottom of the cowl. There's an inlet on the cowl right here with about a 12 inch run and that's a two inch line. So typically, uh, while we had temperature problems at first and played around with radiators and coolant systems and all that, I mean coolant types, we ended up with standard good old 50-50 automotive antifreeze. Um, I'm running coolant temperature now about 190, 185, 190 in the cruise. And if I do a sustained full power climb, I cannot get it to 200. So it's very well cooled. Uh, the oil, where the red line on synthetic oil is 260 degrees Fahrenheit, I can't get it to 220. So. In cruise, I run about 185, 190, and the oil runs about 210, 212, and I'm just very happy with that. That, that took a lot of work. Probably the most important thing, or well, I would say the most notable thing, if you know the RV-12, you know that putting a, a bigger engine on it like this, this engine weighs, this package weighs about 40 pounds more than Rotax, it's not a whole lot, but it, it's material. The problem is the ruggedness of the hard points in the firewall that were designed to take a Rotax and not a larger engine. Um, I've heard people say that the firewall structure and the motor mount is probably limited in the RV-12. In fact, there have been some issues with cracking, replacing rivets and all that sort of thing, um, which, is, which is common, that's okay. When we put this engine on, one of the goals was not only to allow the whole package to be just bolted to the same four points with four bolts, and, and that's it, you don't modify the firewall structure in any way, but in addition we wanted to stiffen up the nose of the airplane. The way we did that is with this plate, this plate right here. You'll notice, if you look close, this plate, forget the engine for a minute, the first thing you do is mount the plate and you see these V-struts, that goes to the original Rotax hardpoint right there. You use the same bolts. At the bottom right near the landing gear there's another hardpoint that this is attached to and ditto on the other side. Now what that does, because this plate is so rugged and it attaches to all four points, it stiffens the nose of the airplane substantially. I actually ran this by 
uh, one of the engineers at Vans, and he he looked at it and said, "Well, you, it definitely stiffens up the nose, you know." And of course, Vans would not want to approve that, and neither would I. Uh, their design is their design, designed for the Rotax engine, and that's fine. So what we did was we stiffened it all up so that we can hang this engine, run it at full power, and not worry about it at all. Now. For the builder's point of view, um, if you're building an RV-12 and you're getting up to the firewall forward set of components um, and you're hesitating to write that check, it's a large check, uh, it's roughly thirty-six, thirty-six and a half thousand dollars At this point, you probably don't have that much money in the project and you're getting ready to write a big check. So we decided, gee, what if we developed a platform that was complete equivalent firewall forward, nuts, bolts, pumps, hoses, fittings, everything, these little screw wraps, and everything you can think of, cooling system, exhaust system, prop, spinner, the whole bit. And we sell that as a firewall forward package, attach it with four bolts, no modifications to the airplane, hook up power, ground, the harness comes all complete. It's got a key system already wired in it. You put power and ground, put some oil in it, put a little fuel, turn the key, and it'll start without the prop and sit there and run like a sewing machine. I mean, it's a thing of beauty. <laughs> I love it. I literally mounted this in one day, and without addressing all the cooling and things that we had to address later, I started it the next day and, and ran it for two or three minutes, and, and uh, it just ran beautifully. So, um, that's the idea. Um, what about pricing? Um, well, if you go shop on Vans, and you're going to find the number I told you. Some, in fact, I just called them to verify that. Um, so you're looking at 36, 37 plus shipping, et cetera, et cetera. Um, our objective, developing this, was to give you 30 to 50 percent more power at half that cost. And that's what we've done. You can buy this engine for 12, and if you buy the entire everything else in the package, it's about 5,200. So you can't get to 18,000, and you and you got this whole thing, and that's right at or less than half of what it would cost you for the alternative solution. However, you've got up to 150 horsepower if you want to prop it that way. Or if you want an all-around cruising airplane, you prop it this way, in which case you got about 125 horsepower on takeoff and climbing 1,500 feet a minute, and you got 65% power, you're cruising at 145 miles an hour true. And that depends on temperature. It'll be 42 to 46, around in there. So to wrap up, if you're building an RV-12 and you're looking for... 30 to 50 percent more horsepower and go like stink performance give me a call or you can look at my website aerosales-eab.com there's a lot of information there including an article by Mark Kettering talking about the technical details of how we came up with this so give us a look thanks now that's the spirit of experimental aviation I like to see. Now everyone, back to building.